recording and hopefully okay so hello and welcome to oh is it week 12 um and anyway today is all about nutrition for injury repair as i run a clinic and most people come to me because they are in pain of some kind and very often um yeah while people think of painkillers for injuries they and they then think of getting physical therapy they don't often think about actually getting nutrition right in order to repair which is quite strange because people were quite used to taking painkillers and anti-inflammatories which as you're going to see might actually make things worse in the long run um there we go so we're going to dive into nutrition or injury repair of various different types of injuries. And if you have any questions, again, I'll let you in at the end and we can ask questions at the end once I've finished the presentation and stopped. Um, the live side. So the overall aim of my weekly masterclass is to go from goal setting to goal getting and inspire more self-health responsibility because I believe that the more healthy you are, the more likely you will be at self-peace and the more self-peace there is, the more world peace there will be because you'll make better decisions, you'll interact with other people better and hopefully you'll inspire them. Um, there's a little bit about me, I'm going to change that at some point. Um, there you go, week 12, the official title. Um, my overall philosophy um, from Ajito Krishnamurti, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. So many people today are in pain. So many people have heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure, and they're not things that are treated with a single remedy. For instance, you go to the doctor, you have high blood pressure. It means you're on pills for life. You go to the doctor, you've got heart disease. You're on pills for life. You go to a doctor with diabetes, you're on pills for life. But if you do the right things, they can all be reversed, but it's your decision to get healthier. Now, if you've seen my other masterclasses, you'll know that my intro slides are quite long, but I've actually shortcutted it today. Um, today we'll be, uh, be talking a little bit about the Magnificent Seven Health Strategies. Um, and overall, they are think right, talk right, drink right, eat right, move right, detox right, and sleep right in order to help your body, brain, and bowel remain healthy. And I've actually brought that down to the fantastic functional three, functional movement, functional nutrition, functional thought. Today we'll be talking a little bit about movement, um, but mostly about functional nutrition. And over the next few weeks, I plan to get back to the functional thought side of things because I really do want to inspire people to more self-peace um, and hopefully help bring about more peace in the world. So. Oh, skipped ahead, go back, go back. Here we go. So there are different types of, well, there are different areas that can be injured, such as skeletal muscles can be injured. And generally there are three distinct stages. The destruction and inflammatory stage, i.e. the part where you actually get injured and there's damage, um, or rather that's when the whole major inflammatory process happens and that lasts for one to three days then there's the repair phase which takes three to four weeks and most people once they're out get out of pain in that initial three to four weeks but the remodeling phase i.e making things stronger again can take three to six months and that's for muscles okay so that's from an article called Treatment of Skeletal Muscle Injury, a review. Um, and there's just a little uh, picture showing how complicated the biochemistry is of the repair of all the different parts there. So a lot going on in there. And let's just see. I just. Um, there you go. Oh dear, this is so that's a picture of the overall repair process of muscles. Oh, things are going a bit slowly today. And then this is wound healing response in tendons. 
And so again, you have the initial inflammation stage, which can last days. Then you have the proliferation fibroplasia stage, which can last weeks. And then in tendons, you have the remodeling phase, which can be months to years in ligaments and tendons, or tendons here, as they put, because um, tendons are different from ligaments, although structurally fairly similar. And so you have this problem again, that people get out of pain and they think they're better and they go out and they do the same things, but on an, something that's still not completely healed. I'm gonna get back to this. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is go to this website here because there's a great little presentation. So I'm gonna stop sharing there. Oh, I'll just do that. So we are just going to share, where am I here? The wrong one screen. Where is it? Nope. Nope. I want to share this. Let's see if this is working now. Share. Stop share. Stop share. And share again. Share. There you go. Now we're going to be cooking. Okay. So this is a great presentation that I found years ago, um, and I still haven't downloaded it, but luckily through the power of Zoom, I can go on here. So muscle and inflammation repair. So I'm just going to whiz through these just so that I've captured them on video and you can actually go through and watch this all slowly yourself if you want to on the replay. So types of different injuries, primary and secondary, because basically the inflammatory response can cause a second injury. And um, then there's different phases of tissue healing. This tells you what happens as time goes on, inflammatory responses, and then all the different things that actually happen in more detail. So you can actually go back and watch the video and slow down, or you can go to the actual piece. But the thing I wanted to talk about here, importance of collagen, elasticity, total maturation phase. Is it the next one? Oh, oh well, oh, here you go, Wolf's Law. So bone and soft tissue respond to physical demands placed upon them. Remodel or realign along lines of tensile force. Critical that injured structures are exposed to a progressively increasing loads, oh, so to its progressively increasing loads throughout a rehab process. So basically this means that as pain decreases, you need to change the exercises so the exercises are stronger. And then as pain goes completely, you need to put the exercises up even more to model what they're actually going to do in real life. So you really have to pound muscles and ligaments and tendons once they actually start getting better. And this is one of the problems of most rehab programs is they're just some very simple basic exercises that you're just pulling your knee up to your chest or you're just moving something side to side and that's it whereas as you get better you need progressively harder exercises and that's what we do at the clinic whether you're coming to me in person or whether I'm seeing you online we actually and I'll show you a little picture of a bit later but I really wanted to get that point across and then again we're just whiz through here and um, so you can actually read through all the different phases all the different factors which we're going to get to in a moment as well all these things can impede healing and getting in the way which is why it can be so difficult sometimes and why it's actually important to realize that things can take a lot of time especially if you don't have all the right nutrients so ligaments and sprains cartilage healing process and cartilage there's all these different parts and they all need slightly different things so it depends on what's actually injured as to how long things will take and what's actually going wrong with you but um here we go and so here we go healing time healing process muscle healing time lengthy longer than ligament healing hmm. return too soon will lead to re-injury and become very problematic so again expecting an injury to be completely free you know better even though you're pain free is ludicrous you actually got to make sure it's strong enough so there we go i'll just whiz through those you can pause those at some point in the future i'm going to stop the share and we are going to go back to here boom so wolf's law 
wanted to put that up there again so I didn't forget to think about it. And so this is my picture of my little rehab chart. So as usually people get better, um, they usually get pain free. They think they're absolutely fine. Most physio exercises are stopped because uh, you feel fine. You go out, you put yourself under a lot of stress and strain and you have injury again. So this is why you actually need continued rehab that gets harder so that you can actually take real life stress on your body. Now, um, some of the next few slides are actually from an original presentation that was done to practitioners by this guy, Dr. Robert Silverman. He is a functional nutrition um, practitioner and also he is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A chiropractor in the States. So, um, you have three phases of care, phase one, uh, acute days, three to five days, um, phase two, subacute, four to eight weeks, and phase three, ongoing or wellness care, um, or rather remodeling. But also if your system has gone into chronic, chronic problems, um, then basically you need to actually make sure it gets back to healing again. And this is where doing all the right stuff makes a big difference. So, and there's a little bit of a summary. You can slow this down and read at your own time. This is a great, great little picture, uh, again, from Rob. Um, muscle imbalances can lead to impair movement, which can lead to faulty motor learning, i.e. feedback between the muscles and the joints in your brain. This leads to altered forces through the joints, which can cause joint degeneration, which causes pain and inflammation, which causes muscle imbalances. And this is the injury cycle. And the things that actually stop the injury cycle are interventions like the proper rehab and exercises, specific spinal adjustments or joint adjustments, the right nutrition and lifestyle. All these things stop this cycle. And most people are progressively in this cycle and put it down to aging, but it's not aging. So um, although the mature athlete, aging tendon and ligament, Aging changes the biology, healing capacity, and biochemical functions or biomechanical function of tendons and ligaments. Or rather, it's not so much aging um, as certain processes slow down, things take longer, but also you've probably accumulated lots of injuries as you age. And as you age, you need to basically um, take into consideration you probably haven't healed from old injuries because you never got the right rehab. But one of the things that they actually took note of in this was something called matrix metallo metalloproteinases lead to degenerative tendon disease. And these are basically, um, yeah, things that come about through well, lots and lots of not looking after yourself. Different toxins, for instance, cause these to build up in your body for various reasons. Now, um, another thing about tendons is the injured sites never achieve the original histological or mechanical features of healthy uninjured tendon. I think that's very often because people don't go through proper rehab. So if they have an injury, it comes back to bite them. Um, so causes um, for basically, well, first of all, we have the original injury, but then you can have dehydration can cause tendons, muscles and ligaments to be weaker. Poor nutrition, big one, chronic inflammation, ages, um, which is basically because you have too much sugar and it's combining with fat and protein. Toxicities, these are all reasons why you may have a tendon or a muscle or a ligament problem. And so it's not just about getting the right rehab, even though that's critically important. It's about looking after all these other things. Um, leaky gut. Um, is another one. If your gut is not working properly, it can cause inflammation throughout the entire body. So you have to actually to prevent well, this is basically a picture of a leaky gut from a much smaller level. You have to get the leaky gut better before you can actually repair the rest of the body. So here are some of the things that you need to do to actually get repair. So first of all, go back and watch last week um, because you're not getting enough sleep. You won't repair properly. Um, and then go back to the week before, because if you're not properly hydrated, you're not going to repair properly. Um, if your system's toxic, go back to week eight and probably week nine, um, because you want to actually do some detox. Very, very, very important. Here you go. You see? 
and detoxification. So that was the mold, so that's week nine. Um, but here we go. Let's say that you are really looking after yourself. You have actually made sure you're getting enough sleep. You are hydrated. You have taken on board and you are detoxifying. Um, but here's some of the things you can do for the acute phase. Because most people think of pain and, uh, and inflammation and swelling. Um, basically, um, as is pointed out, while paracetamol and ibuprofen can actually make you feel a little bit, little bit better, they actually interact and may have an adverse effect on healing, basically. Um, so it might, and it certainly can affect the strength and remodeling later. So it may be better to do something else. Okay, so you can support muscles with uh, calcium, magnesium, lemon balm extract, malic acid, passion flower extract, valerian extract. There's other things as well, but this is just a good collection of things to do. This is on top of having a healthy diet, etc. What I've spoken about earlier. Um, nutrients to address pain and inflammation. Turmeric. And can be very good for bringing down inflammation, readily available, stimulates tissue repair as well. Unlike ibuprofen and paracetamol, um, it does actually stimulate tissue repair. Ginger can be very helpful. Boswellia, also known as frankincense, green lip muscle extract as well, can be very, very good. If you do insist on taking paracetamol, um, take N acetylcysteine because N acetylcysteine makes paracetamol work better and with no side effects so there we go um for the nutrition for spine for the spinal health because again a lot of people come to me with the back pain neck pain you have to make sure you're well hydrated um, and one of the things that helps is glucosamine um, and also msm and very similar chondroitin sulfate because these basically help suck water into the discs um, so that it helps keep them nice and buoyant. Green lip muscle extract, hyaluronic acid, so think similar to collagen, ginger root again, turmeric, boswellia, black pepper, omega-3 fats, four to six grams a day. So if you're taking one, one gram capsule, up that. Vitamin D has also been shown to help in chronic back pain as well. Fascia, um, this is like, so think tendons, ligaments, think of all the grisly stuff in meats. Um, if you've got a lot of fascial or connective tissue damage, then either take collagen or you might actually find the cheaper um, protein powder called glutamine because collagen is made from or glutamine is one of the things you need to make collagen. And some people, perhaps even a lot of people respond better to glutamine than collagen. Um, if you take either of them, take 20 to 30 grams a day but also glucosamine, sulfate, bioflavonoids, which are things that you find in fruits and vegetables, vitamin C, fruits and vegetables, SOD, which is a basically antioxidant, zinc for antioxidant properties, hops, not in beer form, um, magnesium and sulforaphane, which you find in broccoli. And you can also have like collagen or bone broth, um, drink more water, and three fatty acids, so lots of oily fish. I really like oily fish, sardines. If you have a lot of injuries, especially to connective tissues and joints, eat sardines, eat the small tinned ones, eat the bones, the small bones that are edible in small fish. Um, healthy fats, avocado oil, coconut oil. Um, yeah, citrus fruits can be very good. Magnesium as well, an extra bit of supplementation. Oh, that's already here. Magnesium, especially before bed, can be very useful to help you sleep and repair overnight. So incredible. Some good just general advice on diet and nutrition there. However, when it comes to supplementation, um, these are just, this is one of the companies that I use because they do a good range of supplements that goes well together. So the Muscle Ease Advanced contains the nutrients that I spoke about, muscle support, the Inflamese is the, is the turmeric, or curcumin, which is an extract of turmeric, and Boswellia and ginger and black pepper. This is MSM and um, green lip muscle and a few other things. And this is actually uh, a really good fish oil, but it's mixed with something called PRMs or pro resolving mediators, which are the extracts of fish oil that are the things that seem to actually make you actually get better. So that's a very, very, very good fish oil. So if you're really struggling and you've got multiple injuries, then taking all four of these can be profoundly significant and helpful. Um, in phase two, 
and repairing. Again, this is perhaps where actually taking collagen or glutamine can be more important. Um, and also taking it with a fruit and vegetable complex. So extra nutrients to help you sort of stitch together things, bind together things, bring down acidity. And then there's something called undernatured collagen, which you only need in small amounts that actually seems to speed up the repair, especially of joints. Um, again, hops, very important. And PRM Pro resolving mediators and vitamin D3 K2, again, in phase two. So um, joint ease that contains the hops and the um, undernatured collagen, although if you haven't really got a joint problem, then just the infamies still may be useful. Um, fruits and greens, um, and then add that, add to that some glutamine or collagen. So this is the fruits and vegetable powder and extracts. And then if you're in a lot of, if you're still having a lot of problems, then swap from the fish oil I showed you earlier to this, which is much more expensive, but it's just packed full of the pro resolving mediators. Um, so again, if you're having trouble, then basically, so if you're having trouble, you add in this and this, especially for joints. If you're not really having much trouble, then just have this and some glutamine. Or if you want to spend a bit of money, more money, use some collagen. And phase three, um, which is supporting the ongoing remodeling now, it's really important you have the right exercise as well. I don't think that just nutrition is important, yeah, I mean, is, is going to do the trick. You need to make sure you're doing the right exercises as well. Um, so this is where my general advice comes on. So basically a multivitamin mineral, um, big fan of the greens powder, dynamic greens, nearly always extra magnesium um, and also some kind of omega-3. doesn't have to be fish oil, can be, I vary through the fish oils, through the omega-3s. Now, a little bit of extra stuff for sciatica nutritional support, because sciatica, nerve pain, lots of problems, lots of people suffer with that. Um, a couple of fats, GLA and ALA, have been shown to help in low back pain and sciatica. Um, and yeah, I won't yep, go into more of the science, but basically no clear evidence that surgery is more beneficial than to conservative treatment. So basically, if you've been offered surgery for sciatica, you may want to try some of this first. First of all, here we go. So along with that, you have something called PEA or palmitoyl ethanol amide, just P for short, PEA, um, something we use in the clinic. It seems to help with the pain relief. It seems to help with the speeding up of the repair of nerves. And it also seems to contribute to feelings of general well-being. So for instance, some people with long COVID find that they start taking this and they just feel better because PA is used in all kinds of processes around the body, not just healing nerves. And it works really well with ALA, which is why one of the supplements I use, which used to be called Nervies, is actually PA and alpha lipoic acid. Um, and then it's really good to mix it with star flower oil, which I think is also called borage or borage seed oil, because that contains the GLA. So you have the GLA, the ALA and the PA. Um, or you could just try PAA by itself, which is then much cheaper. Um, and you could just try that by itself first of all. There are some additional things, especially if you've got really bad nerve problems or you just want to take something to supercharge everything. Um, this is called Nerve Growth Factor, this brown bottle here, which is Lion's Mane and Rhodiola, um, both of which seem to help with nerve repair and pain relief in sciatica. And ginseng, which does help with nerve repair, um, but I put it in brackets because I don't think there's been any studies specifically on sciatica. So really good for nerve repair, so great for the brain as well this one and then Ganoderma lucidum again especially the spore powder great for bringing down inflammation generally speeding up um, repair mechanisms throughout the body um yeah you can um keep up to date i'm going to put this video here so the pain uk forward slash injury hyphen repair and there are some more natural painkillers if you go to the natural the natural pain relief report um at the website here um so there we go that's it for now um next week i think i'm going to cover women's health and menopause because it's still um 
women's it's still yeah international women's history month so i thought i'd stick with women basically and uh, as ever if you want more information about what i do how i can help people go to beatbloodpressure.com if you're worried are more cardiovascular um or nutritional you can still link up with me through that site um, and then bodyandbalanceuk.com if it's more pain okay as ever thank you very much for watching and uh, let's say bye bye for now let's stop the recording